<coughs> Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Union Zor Education. Um, today's lecture will be about parallel lines, and well, this is an introduction to parallel lines. And uh, uh, basically, all the time, I will talk about parallel lines and transversal. Um, now, before going into the details of this, I, I, I'd like to spend a couple of minutes just discussing certain philosophical aspects uh, of geometry or mathematics, if you wish, in general. Um, it's all about proving something, basically. And when you prove something, you're um, founding your, your proof in something which was proved earlier, and then something before that, etc. And that's how you go, basically, to statements which are supposed to be accepted as axioms, because there is nothing to prove them from. There is nothing before that. So, geometry is very um, obvious of this particular um, quality of the mathematics, because there are certain uh, axioms or postulates, if you wish, um, which the whole thing is based on. And it's very important to, to do it right, to do, like, these are axioms, and these are theorems which can be proved based on these axioms. And those are theorems which are supposed to be based on the prior theorems and prior axioms. So it goes only one way. We don't want to have any kind of logical loops, like A is because of B, but B is because of A. This is something which is completely no-no in mathematics. Now, um, things about parallel lines are very much related to axioms which uh, were first put uh, out by Euclid and then made much more rigorous by Hilbert. Uh, in particular, what's very important in, in this particular topic is the fifth postulate of uh, Euclid which in its original form states something like this. If you have two lines and transversal which crosses both of them, and if some of these two angles is less than 180 degrees, two right angles, right being 90 degrees, uh, then the lines eventually will intersect somewhere. It's pretty complex statement for an axiom, however, Euclid did not have any other way, basically, but to put it as an axiom because he could not prove it. And in theory, that's absolutely correct way to do this type of things because this cannot be proven from other axioms, let's put it this way, which sound much simpler. Like, for instance, you have only one line which can uh, uh, contain two given points. I mean, this is something very obvious on the plane. You don't have any kind of, um, you know, negative feelings. Well, why can't we prove it? This is kind of obvious, but this is not, and still needs to be accepted as an axiom. So the whole theory of parallel lines will actually be based on, on this particular axiom, and um, and so I will proceed now. First of all, terminology. If you have two lines and the transversal, which basically intersects both of them. There is certain terminology about the angles which are formed. There are eight angles, four here and four here. Well, these just among themselves, you know they're called vertical, and these among themselves are supplemental, you know that. But now, since we have two different lines, we can consider angles like one and two, which are one of them, um, is called exterior and another is called interior. So interior angles are these four angles which are in between these two lines. And uh, exterior angles are the other four, these and these two. Now, if you are considering this transver uh, transversal, then the angles on one side are called one-sided and angles on opposite side, let's say this one and this one, are called alternate angles. So what we can have here, how can we characterize, for instance, um, angle 1 and angle, let's say, 3? They are alternate exterior angles. Now, 2 and 
4 are one-sided interior. 2 and 5 are alternate interior. And uh, there is one more. 1 and 2 are called corresponding. It's shorter for one-sided. One of them is interior and another is exterior. They're called, in one word, corresponding angles. Now, what's very important is that parallelism of these two lines is very much related to congruence or supplemental quality of, of certain angles. Um, now, if you consider certain angles which are formed by transversal and one of the lines which we consider, and certain angles which are formed by the same transversal and another line, so this, the, the corresponding um, uh, equality or inequality of the angles actually characterizes parallelism or non-parallelism of the lines. Uh, let me just state one very simple theorem as the first, basically, statement in this particular uh, series of statements. Corresponding angles, one and two, so they're one-sided, one of them exterior, another interior. So if corresponding angles are uh, congruent to each other, then the lines are parallel. What's important is, if the lines are parallel, this is the converse statement, then the corresponding angles are congruent as well. Which means that the congruence of the corresponding angles is basically a characteristic property of the parallel lines which means one defines another. They cannot go, uh, like, there is no such uh, situation when you have two lines which are not parallel to each other, but still uh, congruent um, corresponding angles. So these are necessary and sufficient conditions for one for another. So corresponding uh, angles are congruent is necessary and sufficient condition for the lines uh, being parallel. Now, not only corresponding angles, uh, not, not only the, the, the congruence of the corresponding angles is this type of characteristic property. Also, the congruence of alternate exterior 2 and 5 is um, the same type of property. Um, another example can be that angles 2 and 4, one-sided interior, um, are supplemental to each other. They are together making 180 degrees angle. So there are a few conditions between these angles, and each of them can actually serve as a characteristic property of the parallelism of the lines. So let me start from one particular, one and two, two corresponding angles. Now, if they are uh, congruent to each other, then the lines are parallel. Let me prove it. Let's consider the lines are not parallel. And let's consider they are intersecting somewhere here, if I will extend them sufficiently far enough. So what happens here? Well, let's just consider this point P, point of intersection, and these two points, M and N, where transversal uh, is intersecting our two given lines. Well, if these lines are intersecting at P, then P and N is a triangle. Now, we all know, and this is one of the prior, lecture, prior lectures which I have, that exterior angle of any triangle is greater than any interior not supplemental with it. So if you have a triangle, and you have some kind of exterior angle, it's greater than either of interior angles not supplemental with it. And it doesn't depend what kind of triangle this is. If it's this triangle, it's kind of obvious. Now, if it's uh, uh, obtuse, for instance, angled triangle, 
and you consider this exterior angle, it's still greater than any of these two. All right. So this is a property of any triangle. Exterior angle is greater than any interior not supplementary with it. But now let's let's uh, take a look at the angle one and angle two. Angle one is obviously exterior to triangle PMN, and angle two is interior angle, which is not supplemental with one, which means one is supposed to be greater than two. That contradicts our initial premise uh, that the angles, corresponding angles, are congruent to each other. They cannot be greater or smaller. They're supposed to measure exactly the same. That's the congruency actually is all about. So what we have proven is if these corresponding angles are congruent to each other, then the lines must not intersect on this side. Well, actually, you might say, well, maybe they will intersect on another side of the traversal. Well, this will not be possible neither. So if they are intersecting here somewhere, now, why is this wrong? Well, for obvious conditions, because let's consider instead of 1, let's consider angle 1, 1. 11. And instead of 2, let's consider 22. Same thing. If these two angles um, are equal to each other, then these angles as supplemental are equal to each other. And now we have exactly the same thing. Now, triangle NPN uh, is a triangle where and uh, angle 11 is exterior, and angle 22 is interior, not supplemental. So this angle is supposed to be greater than this, which again contradicts their equality, their congruence. So it cannot um, intersect on this side, it cannot intersect on that side of the transversal. So lines do not intersect. We have proven a direct theorem. So if corresponding angles are congruent to each other, then lines cannot intersect, which means they are parallel by definition of the parallelism. Now let's prove a converse theorem. What if the lines are parallel? Let's prove that the corresponding angles are congruent to each other. OK. Um, how can we prove it? Well, very easily. Remember the fifth postulate of Euclid. So if sum of two angles, one-sided interior angles, less than 180 degree, then the lines will eventually intersect each other. So let's consider one and two. How can we prove that they are equal to each other, they're measured exactly the same way, they're congruent, uh, if lines are parallel? Well, let's consider that that's not the case. Let's consider 1 is not congruent to 2. Now, what it means that angle 2 and angle 4 now, angle 1 and angle 4 are equal to 180 degrees, right? Since they are supplemental to each other. But 2 is not measured the same as 1, which means 2 plus 4 is not measured as 180 degrees. Right? 1 and 4 are 180. 2 is not equal to 1. Right? That's our assumption, which we will basically use to conclude certain things which contradicts our initial premise that the lines are parallel. Right? We are trying to prove it from the opposite side. So if 2 is not equal to 1, 1 plus 4 is equal to 180 degree, that means that 2 plus 4 is not equal to 180 degree. 
Well, okay, fine. That's basically sufficient. Because it means that 2 plus 4 is either a less than 180 degree or 2 plus 4 is greater than 180 degree. That's what it means that 2 plus 4 is not equal to 180. It's either less or greater. Well, if 2 plus 4 is less than 180 degree, then the lines will cross here because of the fifth postulate of Euclid. And that contradicts their parallelism, which we have assumed from the very beginning. That's the condition of our theory. So we came to a conclusion which basically contradicts our initial premise. So our assumption that 1 and 2 are not equal to each other results in some kind of a contradiction. Okay, but this is on this side. What if it's greater than 180 degree? Well, if it's greater than 180 degree, that means that if we will consider instead of angle 4, angle 5 supplemental to it, so angle 4 is equal to 180 minus 5. Now, and angle 22 is equal to 180 minus, uh, I'm sorry, angle 2 is equal to 180 minus 22, right? So, if I will add them together, what will happen? We will have 2 plus 4 here is equal to 360 minus 5 plus 22 in parentheses, right? Now, this is greater than 180. So this is greater than 180. So what we will do, we will add 5 plus 22 to both sides, and we subtract 180 from both sides. So, as we see, 5 plus 22, which means these two on one-sided internal angles, give a sum which is less than 180 degrees, which means it should cross on this side, it should parallel. The lines are, cannot be parallel, basically, because they are intersecting, because of the fifth postulate of Euclid. So no matter what we do, no matter how we measure, if one is not measuring exactly the same as two, then either the lines will intersect on one side of the transversal or another, which means they cannot be parallel. So we came to contradiction. Which means that our original premise that the lines are parallel implies that one and two corresponding candles are uh, congruent to each other. So, congruence of the corresponding angles is a characteristic property, it's a necessary and sufficient condition using the logical language for the lines to be parallel. Now, um, not only corresponding angles uh, have uh, this type of a property, because if you will consider instead of one, angle number five, two and five are uh, alternate interior. Alternate because on different sides of the transversal, and interior because they are in between these two lines. So since these are vertical, equal to each other, basically congruent to each other. Um, it means that the theorem is exactly the same if instead of corresponding angles, you will consider alternate interior angles. Now, if instead of angle 2, you, cons you, you consider angle 3 also vertical and congruent to it, then you can say that 1 and 3, which is alternate exterior angles, uh, have exactly the same property, being 
um, the characteristic property of the lines to be parallel. So if exterior or alternate exterior are congruent, then the lines are parallel, and if the lines are parallel, then all alternate exterior angles are congruent. So there are many different variations, as you see, of the same theorem applied to different angles. And finally, you can say that uh, some of one-sided interior angles, like 4 and 2 in this case, or 5 and 2 and 2, um, being equal to 180 degrees, being supplemental to each other, again, that's exactly the same characteristic property of the parallelism, because uh, if these two are equal to 180, since 1 and 4 also are equal to 180, then 1 and 2 are supposed to be um, congruent to each other. So they're all very much equivalent to each other. And uh, that's why we have uh, how many theorems? Like 10 corresponding uh, alternate interior, alternate exterior, um, and some of uh, one-sided interior, and the same thing, sum of one-sided exterior. So yes, it's five different uh, theorems, uh, direct theorems, and five different converse theorems, which means if angles are um, congruent or supplemental, then the lines are parallel. And that's five theorems, and opposite con uh, con converse theorems, if lines are parallel, then the, 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 the angles which we, which we were talking about are either congruent or supplemental to each other. Okay, so this is the base of all the different um, theorems, future theorems and problems about parallel lines. So parallel lines and transversal angles have the same, have certain property they are either congruent or supplemental to each other, and that's a necessary and sufficient condition for the lines to be parallel. By the way, from which follows a very um, easy way to solve one of the major construction problems which people might actually face. It's a very elementary um, problem, but still, I mean, any construction problem needs to be somehow um, uh, explained and uh, basically uh, laid out. Now, the problem is, if you have a point outside of the line, how to draw a line parallel to this one, which contains this point? Well, there are many ways, obviously, to do it. Now, before, um, in one of the construction problems which uh, uh, we were solving before, um, what we could do is we can draw the perpendicular And then another perpendicular here. Two perpendiculars will um, produce parallel lines. Why? Because these are right angles, and two right angles are supplementary to each other. And as we know, if sum of interior um, one-sided angles is equal to 180 degrees, then these lines will be parallel with this one as a transversal. But it's a little bit more, I would say, lengthy process to build two perpendiculars. Um, using the theorems which um, I have just proven, we can derive with a slightly easier way to do it. Let's just choose any two points here, have a triangle, and then using these three sides, have another triangle with this side being uh, common, and we will use this radius to draw an arc here, this radius to draw an arc here. So this triangle, this is equal to this, this is equal to this, and this is the common side. So these are equal triangles, uh, completely congruent to each other, which means that these angles are congruent 
But if you consider these angles from the parallel line standpoint, so these are two lines. This is transversal. So these are alternate interior angles. And since they are congruent, the lines are parallel. So this seems to be a slightly easier way to build the line parallel to a given line which contains a given point outside. So, you know, you can just use this particular theorem to, to in, in, a, in a real practical um, uh, problem how to draw a parallel line. All right. Basically, that's all I wanted to, to talk about uh, as far as the parallel lines and transversal uh, are concerned. Uh, obviously, the most important is to understand that uh, congruence uh, of certain angles is a necessary and sufficient condition for the lines being parallel. Basically, uh, that's it, and uh, you can probably use this particular theorem in many other problems and uh, other theorems which, uh, which you will um, uh, find in this particular uh, course. Okay, so that's it for today. Don't forget that the website unizor.com contains um, uh, lots of very important educational materials which I would definitely suggest you to use. And for parents and supervisors, don't forget that you can enroll your students into certain uh, course or set of lectures which have exams and you can examine scores and you can actually decide whether to consider the course completed or basically ask your student to repeat the course, to, to take again the same exam and basically reach the point when, when all the problems of the exam are solved correctly and that would be the end of the course and then you can enroll to another course etc gives you uh, some kind of a very good handle uh, to control the educational process. Uh, it's basically kind of a homeschooling, if you wish, and it's a very good aid for homeschooling. Um, okay, thanks very much, and good luck.